let's take a look at the Xeros fixture creator and editor. Um, so to do that, I'm going to go and tap the setup key on my console, and I'm then going to go and say add fixtures on the left hand side. Um, now within add fixtures, we've got a create new fixture option. So I'm going to click that and I'm going to go and click next. And this takes us to the Xeros fixture creator. Um, so the first thing I can do is specify how many channels my fixture has. So I can use the plus and minus buttons there, um, or I can actually go and tap and I'm going to go and type in that I've got 12 channels on the fixture that I'm trying to make. So perhaps, for example, I've got a, a copy of the fixtures manual next to me and I want to go and populate this particular fixture to tell my console what channels my fixture has. Um, so let's say it's a moving light. So I'm going to go and say that channel one is pan. Now you notice as soon as I do that, I start to get my console helping me out. And because the console has automatically populated a default value there of 128, which is 50%. Um, and that way, of course, because this is pan, it means my fixture will by default be at 50% pan. It will be in the middle. Um, but typically, um, pan may be a 16-bit parameter. It might have two channels for pan. So if I go and choose 16-bit, automatically my default value is converted to a 16-bit value. Um, and I also get a fine channel appear, so I can go and edit the fine channel number of this particular pan parameter. But in my case here, it's fine. I'm going to leave it as the next available channel, which is the second channel of the fixture, uh, and click OK. And now we can see that channel one is assigned, and channel two is the fine of that parameter. I'm going to do the same for tilt. Notice, though, the console knows, oh, well, pan was 16-bit, so presumably tilt is 16-bit as well. So you see that the console is, is helping you out. Channel five, that's going to be PT speed. Um, channel six, that's going to be intensity. Intensity by default is at zero because you, uh, you you don't want lights to be on by default normally. Um, seven, well, that's going to be red. Um, red, that does default to full or 255 um, so that you make sure that when you go and turn that fixture on, you bring up its intensity, all of the fixture's LED emitters come on. So you make sure you're getting full brightness. Uh, and that is the same if I go channel 8, we're going to go and say green, that goes to full as well. We're then going to say blue, that goes to full. We're going to go and say 10 is amber, for example, that goes to full. Uh, and then maybe we go and say that uh, parameter 11 is a shutter. Um, and then maybe 12 is some sort of auto program or something like that. Um, well, we don't have an auto program as a kind of pre-populated parameter. So we're actually going to go and need to add a custom. So it might be a program specifically to do with the fixtures colors, in which case I would go and click other color. Um, but in this example here, I'm just going to say that this is kind of an auto macro. It does all sorts of different things. Maybe it moves the fixture as well. So I'm actually going to go and put this under beam. So I'm going to go and say other beam. And I'm just going to go and call that parameter macro. And I can click OK. And now I've specified all 12 channels of my fixture there. So now we've done that, we can then go and start to specify the name. If you don't know the manufacturer of your fixture, maybe you've got an unbranded manual that you're working off, um, you could just leave the manufacturer's custom. Um, that's what it is by default. Uh, but the model, I'm going to call it moving light. And if you do know the mode, you can define that as well. I'm just going to go and say that it's a 12 channel fixture. And when you've done that, you can click OK. And as soon as you click OK, you're then taken to the second page of Add Fixtures with your fixture selected. So I can go and say how many of these I've got, and I can then go and click Finish. And the console will add in that custom fixture. You'll notice it will be displayed in red. That's just telling you that this is not a library fixture. This is a fixture that we've made. It's not coming from the console's library. Uh, as soon as I've done that, I can come out of Setup. I could go and say, uh, one through at at to select those and I can straight away start to control that fixture and uh, all of the LED emitters that the fixture might have will then be controlled in the color mixing tools and equally pan and tilt are getting controlled by the pan and tilt grid. 
So that's kind of an example of a, of a typical kind of simpler fixture. Um, but the fixture editor does allow us to create multi-cell fixtures as well. So I'm going to tap the setup key on my console. I'm going to go to add fixtures. I'm going to choose create new fixture again, and I'm going to click next. This time, I'm going to go and say that I have a 12 channel fixture again, for example. And I'm going to go and say that the first channel is red. But this is a multi-cell fixture. So what we mean by that is this fixture has multiple different light outputs that can be controlled individually. Maybe it's a simple LED pattern, for example, where you've got um, several cells in a line. Each one can be controlled individually. So I'm going to say, well, the first channel is red, but it is the first red. So I'm going to go and say that it is a cell parameter. This particular parameter here lives in cell one. And I can click OK. I'm then going to go and say channel two, and it's going to be green. And I'm going to go and say that's in cell one. I'm going to say blue cell, that's cell one as well. And you see, we've done that. It's got red one, green one, blue one populated in the fixture editor. Now, I'm going to go and say red again, but this time the console knows, well, there is already a red created. So this is presumably the red of cell two. So the console has automatically assigned this red to cell two. So I don't need to do anything more. So I can just go and say red, green, blue. Yep, that's fine. I'm going to add another set, red, green, blue. And then perhaps let's say, well, I've also got a separate intensity parameter just for the third cell. You know, maybe maybe the third cell is a little bit different to the others. It's a slightly different light output. Maybe it has its own intensity parameter. So I'm going to go and say that uh, channel 10 is intensity, but only for cell three. So I can manually specify the cell number for that and click OK. Now, channel 11, that might be a master intensity. So I am going to actually force that to be the fixture's master intensity. And then maybe let's say this fixture also has a master shutter as well. So we can click OK. And now I've done that. I can again, just like we did before, specify the information. So this is going to be my uh, multi-cell fixture. And it's a 12-channel multi-cell fixture. And I'm going to go and click OK. And I'm going to go and click finish to patch that in, come out of setup. And because I am emulating a FLX console, a standard flex console, I can say five dot enter. And that will then show me each of my cells in the output window. So I can see what cells I've got to control with. And I can do the standard syntax such as 5.2 at at and all of that sort of stuff. So I'm going to go into setup. And one last area of the fixture build we haven't mentioned yet, so add fixtures, create new fixtures, next is RDM. So at the point of creating a fixture, you might know that fixture's RDM information. And so you can add that in. And that's really useful. Because if you're using RigSync on the console, what RigSync will do is it will be constantly looking for any fixtures that might be connected to your console. And when it finds one, it's going to look at that fixture's RDM data. And what it will then do is it will compare that data with the fixtures in the library. And if there's a match, the console will go, ah, well, clearly this fixture that I've detected is this fixture from the library. And so the console automatically patches that fixture. So at the point of adding a fixture in, creating a new fixture like we're doing here, you can add RDM information. And that way, if the console ever detects a fixture with matching RDM information, it will patch this exact custom fixture that you're making into the console for you um, at the point of detecting that fixture. Now, as well as creating a new fixture, we can also edit existing fixtures. And there's kind of two reasons why you might want to edit a fixture. Um, the first of those is you might want to make a tweak to an existing fixture. So for example, I could go and click on my very light fixture here, VL800. I could go and uh, click on a mode, click next, and then edit and export. And if I can click on a mode and say edit and export, it will open the fixture 
in the fixture editor and i can then i could make a tweak let's say i could go and say oh well i channel 14 um i could go and rename that parameter if i wanted to and i could go, go and make several changes and tweak it so that's maybe one reason you might want to edit a fixture um equally of course i could go and edit the default values of a, of a fixtures parameters in here as well so that's one reason um but a very powerful use of the edit feature is to actually export a fixture in the library um, that is suitable for the fixture you're trying to control. So let's say, for example, maybe you've got an unbranded fixture, or maybe you do even know the brand of the fixture, but it's not in the console. You cannot find it in add fixtures. Well, before diving in and going in and saying create new fixture and building it from scratch, it's a good idea to add a filter. So I could add in a filter and I can say, right, well, I am looking for a fixture with 10 channels. First is intensity, second is red, third is green, blue. And you can see as I start to do this, the number of fixtures found is starting to drop. So you can go through that process of specifying what parameters your fixture has. And once you've got a low enough number, you can then see all of the fixtures that the console has found with a matching DMX map. And you can see I've got various different fixtures here that the console's found for me. So I can go and check with the parameter list, bottom right here, check that this is indeed a, a fixture with the same DMX map as the fixture I'm trying to control. And if it is, I can click next and I can they say, then say edit and export. And I can then make some changes to the DMX map if I need to. But if this DMX map is identical to the fixture that I'm trying to control, I could just simply give it a new manufacturer name. So I could go and give it a completely new manufacturer name to, to match the exact manufacturer model and mode of our particular light we're trying to control. I could even add RDM information if necessary. And then I can save this fixture to the library. So I could save a new version of this fixture with the new name to the library so that I can then patch my fixtures again in future if I need to. Or alternatively, I could go and say save to USB. Uh, and what that means is you could save your fixture in the ZFix format and you can export it to a USB drive. And then, of course, you can email that file to someone or keep it on a USB drive. So you've already got it on you, for example. Now, what you'll also find in the edit and export window, if I go and edit filter, clear filter, uh, if I go and find my very light fixture here that I've loaded in, um, and click next. If I go and say edit and export, um, you can see the RDM information of this fixture. Now, this is really useful if RigSync has detected an RDM device, because what it means, you can go and add fixtures, find the fixture that your console has discovered, and it's a really useful way of seeing the RDM information of that fixture. Now, the last thing to mention in this window is that we've got a delete fixture type button. So if you have loaded in a custom fixture and um, that custom fixture is not currently patched, so i.e. it's not in the fixture schedule and you're not currently trying to use it, maybe you've added it in and maybe you've then made a new version of it or maybe you've added it in and you don't need it anymore, go and find it. Click next, edit and export, and there will be a delete fixture type button. If you don't see a delete fixture type button, it's probably because this fixture is patched and the console will not let you delete a fixture that is already patched. So I can actually go and say delete fixture type, say yes, and that will have deleted just that one mode from my console. Um, so it allows you to keep add fixtures nice and tidy. If you want to get rid of all custom fixtures you might have loaded, go to clear options and you've got clear fixture files um, like you have always been used to having. And you've got that option there if you want to get rid of all custom fixture files you might have loaded. Um, so that is a bit of an overview of the fixture creator and fixture builder that is in Xero. So it allows you to create a whole new fixture or edit and tweak an existing fixture if you need to. If you've got any questions on the fixture creator and editor, um, just head to the Very Light support page uh, and we'll be able to help you out. Mm -hmm.